We're learning more about the suspected gunman who killed six people before being fatally shot by police at a Sikh temple in Wisconsin. Just a short time ago, police releasing this image of the shooter, identified as 40-year-old Wade Michael Page, a former Army sergeant once stationed at Fort Bragg. And the former leader of a skinhead rock band, investigators say Michael Page is, is the man, uh, excuse me, um, Let's uh, jump right now to Dr. Alan Lippman. He's a criminal psychologist and executive director of the Center for the Study of Violence. Dr. Lippman, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're just getting um, you know, pieces in about the suspected shooter, learning a little bit more. Um, what insights do Let you have so far into what would trigger uh, the average person, or was he the average person, into what he's accused of he being? He was not the average doing? person. Let, let me help to catch the audience up, first of all, with some of the facts. We know um, that... Page was, uh, from two years after he was released from military service, honorably as far as we can tell, though there might be some question about this, he said in an interview that he did with one of these neo-Nazi uh, record labels that he went through a kind of break. He broke with his past. And from that point on, for the next 12 years, he began to play with a series of absolutely extreme racist, white power, anti-Semitic bands, these are bands that if you look them up on the web, they have videos on YouTube like Youngblood, which calls for the overthrow of everyone but the white people. Um, there are many bands like this, and he set up one of his own. Uh, so we know that for 12 years he was really preoccupied with white supremacy, neo-Nazi, and racist sentiments. About two years ago, he moved to Milwaukee. About two weeks ago, right after the Denver shootings, it looks like. There's a question regarding the time. He moved to a new apartment, and he seemed to know the Sikh temple well, even though no one at the temple had ever seen him there before. So it seems quite possible that he had checked this area out. If you put this all together based on similar shootings from the past that we've seen in the Secret Service study, this seems to be someone who was absolutely enraged filled with anger, as his uh, neighbor said, this is someone who always seemed angry at the world, who was probably someone who was psychopathic, that is, who needed to be violent, who needed to be angry. And there were reports in the last couple of weeks of arguments with a girlfriend. And in these cases, when you have someone who's a ticking time bomb, who's enraged, enraged at the world, furious at themselves for being isolated, and furious at the world for rejecting them, if there's a trigger, if there's some kind of a breakup or some kind of a rejection, that lights the match to the bomb and you get these kind of explosions, people who want to go out in a blast of glory. We saw the same kind of thing at Virginia Tech and at Columbine. So this is the, the pattern that's starting to come together. The action seemed to start to happen two years after he was discharged from the military in 2000 when he threw everything aside and took up with these extremist, racist, neo-Nazi, white power groups. And, you know, some of your viewers might be wondering, you know, what do I mean by this, by a band that is a, a white power band? Let me read to you just a little bit of the lyrics from the first band that he decided to join, the uh, Young Land Band, which refers to the German state. I'm going to write a letter to the head of the state and tell him I refuse to pay one more nickel to a corruptive system that sends my money to the Jews. Now, this is not the kind of stuff that you hear on your top 40 AM radio every day. Mm -hmm. This is a tight-knit, hateful subculture that he was immersed in for 12 years. Doctor, let me ask you... And that's you, the underlying foundation. How does someone yeah. make the distinction, if you know someone like this in your neighborhood, in your community, between those who will simply engage in messages of hate or, or music or things that that speak to them versus somebody who will take this next step and actually harm other people? Where's the red flag? Where's the line that's crossed? It's an excellent question, Shannon. So if we take the case of comparing this to Holmes, for example, Holmes is actually an easier case, could have been predicted with greater ease. Why? Because in his life, up until a certain point, he was functioning relatively normally. He was doing well in school. He was achieving very well. And then there was that critical break point that we always see around the late teens, early 20s, where a person manifests psychosis, starts to say absolutely bizarre things, begins to get treatment. So we know that there is an active mental illness. And of course, we know this person was at great risk. We heard it from the psychiatrist. With someone like this, with Paige, his personality 
from two years after he got out of the military and perhaps before, was oriented not merely, Shannon, towards unusual music or even edgy music, but music that backed the order, which calls for the overthrow of the U.S. government and the removal of all non-white people and Jews from the U.S. That's what they sing about. So this is a, a very dangerous subculture. They are all very dangerous. And the question, and they have committed dangerous acts. The leader of the order has a 190-year felon sentence for acts that he committed based on hate. So the question with these kind of groups is, who do you pick? You have a Doctor. bunch of people who are psychopathically enraged. Mm -hmm. And the way to come at it is, we need to focus on hate groups in this society. These are neither right nor left. They are hate. And we need to stop it. Dr. Lippmann, thank you for your insights. We'll certainly learn more in the days and months to come. Thank you. you